are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. How are you? Wow, excellent. Looking forward to chatting with you. I've been looking forward to this too. Awesome. Help me, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> You're in the right place. We'll fix that. That's okay. Good. Um, I'm recording the session for you, so this way you can replay it if you want. You can listen to it again. Um, and if you're cool with that, we can also post it. You know, we can inspire others. It's up to you. Okay. Um, we have about 30 minutes or so to chat to see where you are, see how I can help you. Anything goes, anything you want to discuss, any questions you have, this is your time, you and I going over where you are, where we can get you, how soon you want to be there. Okay. You know, Yesterday. <laughs> that's a good place to be. Awesome. All right, Ivan. Um, give me a quick, quick kind of an overview. You've been at it for how long? This is going into my second year. Second year. Excellent. Okay. And um, how much money would you like to make in the next 12 months if things go well for you? If things go well for me, I'd like to break 100,000. 100,000. Okay. Would that be good? Would you be happy with that? For, to begin with. Well, sure. It's going to grow, but let's sure. talk about the next 12 months for now. Okay. Let's, yeah. let's start with that. How many deals would it take to get there? How many transactions would you about have to close? What's your best guess? I would guess probably around 25. About 25 closed deals would get you there. All right. Yeah. So my first question, of course, please stop me and ask questions whenever we, we talk about something where you want a clarification, just go for it. Um, what do you feel is the biggest obstacle right now? What is the biggest barrier? Like if we can fix one thing, it'll be a lot easier to get to your 25 to 100 grand. What would it be? Me. Cool. <laughs> That's an excellent, man, this is easy. You're making it too easy, Yvonne, come on. Um, I've been doing a lot of work on myself. I recognize I'm, I'm my greatest hindrance. Good. Are you on the path with me? Yes. Excellent, good. So the first month is exactly about this. And the reason we start the path always with mindset is because just like you said, it's the biggest obstacle. Right. Because, and this is just my experience. I struggled with it, as you know, my story, homeless and all that broke and a total <laughs> failure. Not because I wasn't working hard. I was working my ass off. Right. Not because of a market. Not because of all that bullshit. That was just stories. It was me, my mindset, my beliefs were completing and leading me astray. And every time I had an opportunity to make money, I would fuck it up. And really well. I was getting really good at that. So you're absolutely right. So tell me a little bit more. What do you feel about your mindset right now? Would you like to shift or change? I feel unworthy. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Um, can you... Describe to me what it feels like. Hmm. I think it's, it's probably going to sound odd. I want to be successful, but I have a fear of being successful. Okay. And, and that's that means normal. I'll be seen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you ever made $100,000? I made 90000 when I worked for Caterpillar Financial. Okay. So as a nine to five job, it was possible. Now you feel like because you're on your own, it's a lot harder, right? That and trying to, you know, connect with people and um, be able to talk to them intelligently and feel like, you know, I can get the, get the business. I know I can do the job. Yeah. And even as I've closed, they've always been more than happy. But mm -hmm. it's getting out of my own way and being able to approach strangers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're the only one. Nobody else has this problem. So I can't help you. <laughs> I know it, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is normal. We're not wired that way. Plus, we have been conditioned. Remember when you were about three or four? Your mom would tell you, Yvonne, stranger danger. Don't talk right. to strangers. That's a super powerful programming. And when you're three or four, your mind is like a computer just absorbing all that stuff. And that stays with you for a very long time. Right. And your parents have a huge impact and influence on behavior that comes in later. The well, and my father always taught us, um, I was to be seen and not heard. Not heard, yes. Yes. Money doesn't grow on trees. Yes. Penny yeah. saved is penny earned. You know, yeah, I had things. nothing worthwhile to uh, say and I wasn't to talk. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So all this programming is stored in your subconscious mm -hmm. and you develop these certain beliefs and perceptions about yourself, the world, the money, success, and all that. And right. it happens before the age of 12 in right. most cases. By 12, it's rock solid. Most mm -hmm. of your beliefs about success, money, wealth, and all that stuff is set before you mentally develop the ability to logically say, well, that's bullshit. That doesn't make sense. Right. Sure, money can grow on trees. Sure, it can be easy. Why would it be hard? You know what I mean? And then things start to happen and you wonder, 
Why am I struggling so much? It's the market. It's the president. It's the people around me. It's the real, you know, it, and we have all these stories that we like to hold on to because it's easier to blame something out there than to have a good look inside. So you're doing a great job, great work to understand. It's all within me. That's the bad right. news. The good news is it's all within you. That means the way you got there is also the path out. Because very often these beliefs we create just by repetition and attaching emotions to them. Okay. So if that's the recipe to get the beliefs you got, and they seem to be very powerful in most cases, at least in my case, that was like rock yes. solid. Yes. I can also break them and move on. Yeah? Yes. All right. So from a practical standpoint, what do you feel would be time well spent for us today? What would you like to cover? What should we focus on? Where would you like to go? Well, I'd like to know from your perspective, how did you break your thought patterns? Because like you said, it's ingrained and you think you've worked through it and boom, it's right there in your face again. Yeah. yeah. I'll give you some tips that worked for me. What I encourage you and everybody else watching this, take 15 strategies and techniques, diligently apply them. And I promise you two or three will work really well. Okay. Okay. It is a matter of experimentation because we are wired differently. We think and feel different things and it comes from different sources. So just try them, but I'll tell you what worked for me. Number one, what I would suggest to you is if you haven't done it already, watch the first session of the path mm -hmm. and read the workbook. And most importantly, do the exercises in the book. Okay. That will be essential because it will very quickly walk you through some very not complicated and not too time consuming exercise. Have you done the book yet? Have you gone yes. through the first book? Excellent. I've always done that, yes. It was, but then it's, it's still that cycle. Of course, you know, I've had many years of practice. <laughs> sure, that's the thing. If you yeah. keep repeating it, it's like um, one of my first records. You remember records? You're too young. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you really? Yes. Well, your parents had them, not you. But that's I right. Had a record player when I was young, you know, and one of my first records I got was Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water. My favorite. Right? Isn't that yeah. a, one of my favorite albums? That's how fucking old I am. Anyway, <laughs> so I love to listen to it. And one day I had this couple with my younger brother. He knocked the record and there was a glitch in the record. There was a little groove that got busted, you know, scratched. Mm -hmm. From that point on, it would play when you're weary, when you're weary, when you're weary, to the point where now when I hear the song on the radio, that loop kicks in. Okay. <laughs> Years later. So by repetition, we create this deep groove and we just get stuck in it. So first thing you gotta do is nudge the needle. You gotta nudge your needle a little. So here are some of the things I recommend. In addition to what you already have in the book, which I think is a good foundation to get you going. Mm -hmm. Start paying attention to your self-talk. That little monkey voice, when does it kick in? What triggers the fear of self-talk? What is it? Just becoming aware will help you tremendously. Okay. Because you become conscious about it. See, the very, very often we go in the subconscious mode where we're not even aware of the thoughts we have, the things we say to ourselves. I always kind of joke like, it's funny how you tell yourself things you would never allow anyone else to tell you. Absolutely. Isn't that interesting? Like yes. you treat yourself the way you would never, I would punch somebody in the nose if they told me the shit I tell myself. So, yeah, right? <laughs> you know, like, really? Let's take this outside. You know, we wouldn't even make it outside <laughs> there you go we're gonna settle in on the way and yet we are we can be pretty harsh to ourselves you notice yeah. that yes do you have any examples of that can you can you share with me what 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 happens when you do have these kind of odd self-talks where you're too critical or too too um, negative to yourself um i'm always um i'm my worst enemy you don't have to tell me when I've done something wrong because I have already beat myself up many times. So it's just like, you know, how dumb, how stupid, what were you thinking? You can't do anything right. And it just goes on and on and on. Give me one practical example, real estate example, where this kicked in, where it was quite noticeable for you. Um, real estate wise. Um, not real estate, just whatever comes to your mind that you feel like it's significant enough to bring up. It's anytime I make a mistake. 
Okay. You know, because, uh, for instance, when I worked at Caterpillar, I exceeded all expectations uh -huh. and I added several million to the bottom line my last year I was there. So it's not that I'm not capable. It's mm -hmm. that I set myself at too high of a standard. And yeah. if I don't reach that, oh boy, howdy, you know, and then I just spiral down. Yeah. So give me one practical, real example of this from your real estate life. Hmm. Um, I think it's just talking to strangers and, and um, you know, I've been really reaching out and going into stores and making sure I make contact and just speak to them. But then I always feel like, you know, I don't have anything worth saying. You know, it's that old talk, my father. You know, I don't have anything worth saying. They don't want to hear that. I, try, I never share this happened person. to you. I'm sorry. When was the last time this happened to you? Um, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Tell me what happened. It was just, you know, while I'm talking to the person uh, inside Stop. me. Who was the person? Who are you talking it, to? It was just a female, and I was in a department store, okay. and I had just struck up a, ca a casual conversation. Mm -hmm. And we were just having a good time because I had looked up at her, and I smile. I always try to look at people and smile. Uh -huh. And she came over to me, and she said to me, you know, it is so nice to have somebody look at me, really look at me and uh -huh. smile. So we started talking, but on the inside, I'm hearing, she doesn't want to hear your shit. She don't care about you. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. You yeah. know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. That's a great example, by the way. One of the exercises, if you remember, in the book we talk about is to have a chat with your little monkey friend. Mm -hmm. Because what, what and I, I refer to drunken monkey, which goes back to the Buddhism. Buddha was the first one that addressed that chitty chat we have in our mind which is the, the herd of drunken monkeys. What the monkey really is in, in, in like a biology so that you know where it comes from, I actually happen to have a human brain here, if you believe it or not. How cool is that? How cool How is that? How many real estate coaches do you know that <laughs> actually have a human brain in their studio? How cool is that? <laughs> that is really cool. Only one. <laughs> <laughs> But the reason I wanted to show you is there's this little tiny part in your brain okay. called the lizard brain. Mm -hmm. This is the first brain that we developed as humans. It's about 285 million years old. And the reason we have it is the number one purpose. It's in part of our neurobiology is to protect us from dying. Okay. Because millions of years ago, we were these tiny little pretty helpless creatures in the world where everything was to get us from the giant dinosaurs who could just flatten us to tigers and lions to even the little critters with a little stinger, everything could kill us. And many did kill us. Right. So what the, what the crocodile brain or the lizard brain, the primitive brain did was always be scared because that was a good way to survive, to stay alive. So if you heard a little noise in the bushes, you get alert and you run the fight or flight or sometimes freeze response kicks in. That's all your lizard brain. Okay. Kicking in. Okay. So today you're not going to be eaten by a dinosaur. Not likely unless you're in San Diego wild park. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not going to happen, but we developed the rest of our logical cognitive systems, processing information. The lizard brain hasn't changed one bit. It still does what it's supposed to do. Keep us scared. Keep us on our toes. Watch out for strangers, stranger danger, be alert, be aware. Does that make sense so far? Yes. All right. So this little voice that you hear in your head, you're not good enough, this and that, what it's really trying to do, its purpose is to protect you. It's to protect you from pain. It's to protect you from dying. Now, we as humans are social creatures. We have very intricate social networks that we connect to. In your brain, in your lizard brain, there is part of that programming is if I'm excluded from the group, I die. Which back then when we're part of the tribe, and let's say you stole somebody's chicken, you would be expelled. Okay. They will kick you out, which is pretty much death. Because mm -hmm. it was back then impossible, and it is to an extent in a way, even today, impossible to live on your own. We are not hermits. We need connections. Social mm -hmm. connections, work connections, all that. Family connections. Yeah? Yes. So now this programming is super powerful. And we actually, and there are scientific studies and MRI scans you can watch that fire off when there's a social rejection, fire off the same way as the most excruciating pain in your body. In other words, our brains experience rejection. 
isolation the same way we experience pain. So we link tremendous amount of pain to stuff like that. So now, your little lizard friend, your lizard brain, thinks if I go out and talk to expired listings and they reject me, it's gonna be painful, it's gonna be unpleasant, and the coding says that can equal death. So let's not do that. You logically know if I go out and prospect and I talk to people, that's gonna mean money. I'm gonna mm -hmm. be successful and happy. But that's not your lizard brain's programming. That's your neocortex programming. That's the smart logical processing. That's telling you that. That's where you set a goal. I'm going to make $100,000. That's the modern brain, the latest brain, the neocortex. But if there is a conflict between your neocortex, the cool goals, and your lizard brain who wants to be safe and comfortable, guess who's going to win? Me. The lizard brain every single time. Mm -hmm. It has the more power. And the reason it has power is because it's connected to another part called the amygdala, which is like an alarm system. It yeah. starts releasing uh, adrenaline. It starts releasing... Uh, hormones and literally chemicals in your body to be prepared to either fight or to run like hell. <laughs> one of the two. Yeah. Either one is really good when you prospect next part. Of <laughs> okay. So there she goes. This, yeah, this is kind of a long uh, explanation of what's really going on, but understand that A, it's normal. B, it has a lot to do with your programming and a lot to do with your neurobiology. Okay. Okay, are you with me so far? I don't want to yeah. lose you in this whole scientific stuff, but that's really where that little voice goes, that, who it comes from. It is just the way we're wired. So you're not broken. There's nothing really wrong with you. But the problem is if you stay in this state of being nervous, being uncomfortable, you will start linking pain to prospecting, to talking to strangers, to getting on the phone, to following up with leads, to a point where you eventually figure out a way out whether it's going to be a massive failure, which was my case, or it's going to be some health-related stuff or something. There's always a way. We humans are very creative when it comes to that. We just say, it's not working for me. I'm not cut out for it. I'm, I'm not meant to do this. There's not enough business. I'm not making enough money. Let's try something else. And that something else is usually a choice that's safe, comfortable, because that's what your lizard brain wants more than anything. Okay. Safety, comfort and familiarity. It hates stuff that's new. It hates stuff that's out of your comfort zone. It hates things that can put you in from that, its perspective to a, a jeopardy, a danger. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. So the first thing I recommend is if you haven't done it, and even if you have, if you have do it again. Okay. Is do that little meditation where you relax. Have a little talk with your lizard brain. And I know it kind of sounds weird. I'm going to talk to myself. Yes, you will. <laughs> and it is slightly strange, but it will give you some insight to what is the real fear? Okay. What is the little monkey trying to protect you from? What is that programming? And that's, this can be almost like a regression therapy where you're going to go back to being eight years old and told you should be seen, not heard, or many other things that can come up. And that's okay. It's all part of the process. Because if you don't take care of it, the rest will never work. You will drive it on discipline, and you are plenty disciplined. You will drive it on willpower, which I know you have. Yes. You will drive it consciously and logically. But if the subconscious and if the lizard brain is not on board, you're going to burn out. You're going to run out of fuel. It's impossible. It's like driving with your brakes on. Yes, that's what's happening. Doesn't it feel that way? Yes. Okay. So, where are you guys? Is okay. We all have been through this process. It's a process. Nobody was born with this natural gift. Yeah, there are a handful of people who have. But folks like you and I, we have to kind of figure out a way to get there. The good news okay. is you can get there. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. So one, uh, homework number one, have a little chat. Do a little soul searching. Do a little kind of a internal dialogue. What is it that this little monkey, and if you want, you can give it a name. That makes the conversation a little easier. <laughs> Make sure, make sure you don't do this in a line in a grocery store because I may be a little <laughs> odd. <laughs> okay. Just do it in a quiet place where it feels safe. Follow the instructions that you have in the book and just have a little chat. And you may do this a few times to really discover what am I really afraid of? What is really going on on the inside that the little monkey brain is trying to protect me from? That's step one. Step two is make a decision. I want to change. And here is why. What is it really about the, because you already know it's not the 100,000. No, no, not at all. It is about having the freedom 
building the lifestyle that you want. Are you married? Yes. Kids? Four. Four kids. All right. So you have five pieces of motivation. Your spouse, mm -hmm. your husband, and four children mm -hmm. who look up to you, who depend on you, who you can contribute to tremendously. Okay. Not just with the money. That's fun. That's cool. That's awesome. But also as an example, how you can teach them, you can live a life on your terms. You can okay. have it your way. You can have the freedom you want. You don't need some boss deciding how much money you're going to make, how, how many hours you're going to work, what kind of projects you're going to work on. You can have it your way. And it's more enjoyable, it's more pleasant, and God, it's so satisfying. Okay? okay. Are you with me? Yes. What you want to create is first scramble that old programming, be aware when it kicks in, replace it with the new programming. Because what you're going to come down to is a statement like, I'm not good enough. Simple stuff. It's going to be that five, six-year-old talk that you're mm -hmm. going to discover that the monkey will give you. This is not about judgment. This is not about criticizing. This is about discovery. Right. Then what you're going to do is you decide what is the 100,000 really representing to Yvonne? Not just to your family, but to you personally. What is it that you really want to get out of it? And get very clear. That's why I encourage you guys. One of the first things you do, put together a vision board. Because you're taking something that's out there that's very esoteric at first, ideas, goals, dreams, desires, and you're starting to turn it into something very practical, tangible, that you can touch, see, feel, smell. Okay? Okay. Have you done your vision board yet? Yes. Fantastic. Do you feel like it really excites you? No. Okay. I feel I'm, I'm holding myself back. I, can't, I don't even allow myself to dream. All right. Throw it out. Okay. Throw it out. Start all over again. Okay. Start without being attached to your history or to price tags. Okay. None of that matters. The way you're going to measure it is by the level of excitement you feel if you cut out. What is one thing that you absolutely are passionate about? Like, man, if I get that, whether it's an item to buy or a place to visit or whatever, what is it for you? What jazzes you up more than anything? I would like to travel and see Europe. Excellent. I know a thing or two about Europe. <laughs> Where would you go? Um, I would like to go to Spain to begin with. Very nice. Okay. Which part of yeah. Spain? Have you decided or would you just travel the whole country? I would like to travel the whole country, try the different wines and learn how to cook different dishes. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, we speak the same language. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is fantastic. How much time would you like to spend there? At least three weeks. Three weeks in Spain. All right. Let me put it on the board. Would you go by yourself with your husband or the whole family? He won't. He, he doesn't want to travel, so I'd go by myself. Go by yourself, maybe with a friend. Okay. Yeah. Um, how much money will it cost to have a nice fly first class, of course. Don't ever fly coach. Forget coach. No. Okay. Would I have no clue. Just go, fuck no. You know how much that costs? Well, Europe is about, <laughs> right about $8,000, 10 maybe. Okay. Depends on the airline. Okay. Did the monkey voice say something when I said first class? Oh, no. I'm, I'm all on board first class. On board. All right. So you're going to fly first class, which is nice because you get real silverware instead of that plastic shit. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Uh, how much money would it cost to stay in a nice hotel, get a travel guide maybe, rent a car, do something fun? What do you think? Maybe 8000 a week. I don't know. 8000 a week? Yeah. If you That's with hotel flight. and... All right. Well, let's, yeah, let's, let's do a quick math real quick. Okay. So let's say it's 8000 to fly. Let's just mm -hmm. say, I don't know what it is right now. We fly to Prague and that's usually about 8,000 a ticket. Okay. So 8,000 to fly. And let's say a night in a nice hotel would be what? About $250? Would at you say? least. Yeah. Okay. 300, easy math. Mm -hmm. I'm horrible at math. Please bear with me. Ron. <laughs> I suck at math, but I got help. <laughs> All right. So let's say it's $300 a night mm -hmm. yes. times 21 days. So that's going to be 6,300 for the hotel. And let's say you spend what? 150 bucks a day on food? At least, yeah. 200? Two, 200 to include incidentals if I wanted to pick up some little Tosky. Nice wine and stuff. So 200 a day times 21 days. So we're at 4,200. And let's say you buy some souvenirs, visit some places. So let's throw in another thousand for like other stuff. Okay. Okay. Anything else that I should add to it? Well, if I take cooking classes and what have you, that would, there would be a cost there. 
How much? Maybe 3,000. Another 3,000 for cooking classes? Yeah. That'd be fun to take a cooking class in Spain. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, Michael, I had a friend that did that, and she rode uh, a bicycle for so many miles, and they went to different farms and tried their wine and learned a different dish to cook. What's that Spanish wine, Riojas? I think so. That is a good wine. My wife loves it. All right. So is there anything else we need to add to it? Would you buy some clothes before you go? Well, yeah. All right. <laughs> How much? Uh, I don't know. 3000 4000 4000 for some nice clothes, nice new luggage, stuff like that. Anything else we need to buy? Not that I'm aware of. That's it? That's it. Right. My heart is just pounding now. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Scared, I think. <laughs> Scared of what? Well, I'm sitting here thinking, oh my God, how much money am I taking from the family budget? How much more do I need to earn? <laughs> See? Here's what you're going to do. Watch this. And everybody who's watching this, you guys. Can we post it on YouTube, Ivan? Would you be okay with that? Sure. All right. So let's add it up. So we have 8,000 round trip plus 6,300 plus 4,200 plus 8,000. So 26,500 is your total for this lovely trip. 26,500, give or take. Okay? Okay. Now, if that trip happened, once it happens in this way, would that be cool? Absolutely. Would it be It'd like be awesome. an awesome experience? Yes. All right. So here's what we're going to do. You need to sell 25 houses. So 100,000 divided 25. So you're making about 4,000 a deal. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes. So I'll take the 26, 500, divided 4,000. It's going to take you 6.6 .6 transactions. Oh, cool. Okay. When are you going? The summer. There's summertime. Summertime. <laughs> okay. So 25 plus, let's, let's round this up to seven. 25 plus seven is 32. That's the only difference. Okay. Seven transactions, seven extra transactions. Instead of doing 25 in the next 12 months, you're going to do 32. Here's that what makes I can it easier do. looking at it transaction wise instead of money wise. But here's the connection. Let me give you the secret to profits in real estate and having a good life. Okay. Three moving parts is all it takes. Three moving parts. First, you need to know how to get leads. Mm -hmm. You have to have a system to generate leads. You're already on track, talking to people, prospecting, experts, doing all that. Second, you need to have a follow-up. Through follow-up, you're going to get appointments. Okay. Third is get listings. Right. That's the whole secret. You generate leads. You follow up with them to get appointments. You turn those appointments into listings. That's your trip to Spain. And anything else. Okay. That's the ticket to 100,000, million, whatever. The system doesn't change. The steps don't change. You get leads, you get appointments, you get listings. Okay. That's the whole secret. It's not any more complicated than that. We tend to overcomplicate it, mm -hmm. but it's not. Now, don't, don't confuse. I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy. It's a lot of work. Right. But then let me ask you. Working nine to five job. What are the chances of you taking a twenty six thousand five hundred dollar trip? Nada. <laughs> you would have to be like a vice president, senior executive, with years of experience, way up there. Right. Am I right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. What are the chances of you as a real estate agent? It's all up to me. Solid. Pretty fucking good. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. All within your reach. Okay. And you know what the hardest thing will be? This. Oh, yes. This is mechanics. This is mechanical. This is just executing certain steps over and over. How do I get my leads? You set up four lead generation funnels. Then what do I do? You figure out how you're going to connect with those people. Is it going to be passive methods, active methods? Am I going to go visit the expires? Am I going to mail them, email them, call them? All of the above, obviously. Then you set up a second funnel for sale by owner. Same concept. I'm going to keep in touch. You have the systems from me. You're doing path from me. I will teach you everything step by step. You okay. get everything you need. Leads covered. Then what are we going to do? Then we're going to move to your time schedule. Make sure you're organized. Make sure you're doing the right things at the right time. 
Then we're gonna to move to the follow-up. How do you keep in touch with these folks? How do you build enough trust with them so that you start getting appointments? Then we're gonna move on to the listing. It's all connected. And okay. as we go through this, you're gonna learn it piece by piece. Okay. Make sense? Absolutely. It's gonna require two things. One, you're gonna trust me that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's part one. And part two, you have to diligently execute these steps regardless of the outcome. Now that's an important part because there will be times where you go talk to an expired listing and it's not going to work at all. Mm -hmm. And you're going to start doubting yourself. You're going to doubt my, doubt me, doubt the system, doubt you being in real estate, all these doubts. What's going to separate the rock star from everybody else is the rock stars will stay because they understand I'm going to stay with it. I'm going to, I have to keep going. Maybe there's something I can tweak or adjust. And sometimes it just doesn't work. That's just life. Okay. It's going to keep going. Adjust, get better, get more confident, improve your communication. That's what we're working on right now. And this chapter of path and just keep going. It's okay. all good. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Now, this you can make happen. And I have a faith you will. Okay. You can do 32 deals. What is that? Let's break it down. Now, these are made up numbers. Yours will be different, but this will kind of give us a baseline so we understand how you break it down. 32 transactions closed requires 32 listings. That's what you need to close in the next 12 months. Take, 12, take 32 listings, close 32 transactions, okay? Okay. So divided by 12, that's 2.6 a month. So 2.6 listings taken a month. 2.6 okay. a month. I divided by four, four weeks on average, that's 0 0.6 a week. Hmm. That's what it's going to take. Now, how many appointments do you need to go on to get 32 listings? Let me rephrase that. You go on 10 appointments right now, 10 listing appointments with motivated sellers. Out of those 10, how many do you think you're going to walk away with signed contract? Well, every time I've gone on a listing appointment so far, I've gotten the deal. Woo, rock star. Good. Let's be conservative though. Okay. What if sometimes you don't get it? Would you say, can you get 70%? Is that realistic? I think so, yeah, 75%, yeah. All right, so 75%, cool. Now again, I wanna be con conservative and realistic. I'm not here to blow smoke up your ass. Uh, so let's do this. So you need to go on 45 appointments in the next 12 months. Okay. I divided by 12, that's 3.8 appointments a month. Divide that by four, that's 0.9 appointments a week. Okay? Okay. Doing so hard. Easy math. The last number you need to know is how many leads will it take to get an appointment? How many potential and actual leads do I need to generate an appointment? Again, you probably don't know the exact number. Start tracking it. Okay. How many expired for some owners, referrals, all these lead general open houses, whatever you do, how many does it take to get one appointment? Now, let's baseline it. Good rock stars who work with me and you are working high probably leads, you don't need that many leads to get appointments because you're already working with people who are motivated and are doing something. If you're doing like online lead generation or door knocking, direct mail, a lot of these leads will be long-term, so it's gonna require more. So let's baseline it at about 10 leads per appointment. Okay. Now again, this will change, plus you're gonna get better. The systems will get better. So use this just as just kind of a starting point. Okay. So if I need 10 leads to get an appointment, you need to generate 320 leads. I'm sorry. Yeah, 320 leads. Okay. That's your goal. So 320 divided by 12, that's 26.6. 26 26 26.6 a month. Okay. Leads divided by, what do you work on average? 24 days? I work five days a week. Five days a week. What do you so, mean? So 20. So 20 yeah. days on average month? Yeah. Okay, so I divide by 20. So that's 1.3 leads a day. Now watch this because this is really the beautiful part of this formula. If you get 1.3 leads a day, you're going to Spain. Look out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Think about it. 1.3 leads a day. Every day you work, five days a week, will get you 20.6, 320 a year. 320 uh, leads a year will get you 45 appointments. 45 appointments will get you 32 listings, will get you 32 closings, We'll get you the same. Thanks. Okay. Every day you don't feel like working. Every day you start flaking. Every day you feel like 
I'm not going to do it today. I don't feel like it. What you're really saying is no to this. Okay. So that's the direct link. I get my shit done every day. I do my best. I will control what I can control. I don't know if you were on our last live session. I was talking about the difference between having a goal and having an objective and having a target. Yeah. You simply focus on your targets. What do I have to do to get my lead a day? 1.3 leads a day. What do I have to do? What does it take? And focus on that. Improve the system, improve your communication, improve your mindset as you go. Okay. Now, here's what I want you to do from now on. Think, dream, talk, hope. Hope is not a good word. But think about it, visualize it, dream about it, talk about it. What is it going to be like when you're in Spain? Okay. Get some catalogs where you want to go. Start checking airfares. What wines you want to enjoy? Where is the best cooking class you can take? Start taking small steps towards the trip. Not to pretend. Not this is like, oh, let's play a game. I know it's not going to happen. It's too expensive, but let's just take steps realistically towards the dream. Okay. And the last thing I want you to do, put the vision board together about your trip to Spain as if it already happened. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Put it together. All the fun stuff you've done in Spain. So if somebody looks at it and says, where did you go? <laughs> when was that? How come you didn't tell me you went to Spain? Yeah, when did that happen? <laughs> because here's what's going to happen. We're going to work with our subconscious. Okay. Your subconscious cannot tell the difference between imaginary and real. It cannot tell the difference. The emotional experience of your subconscious mind is identical. That's why we get scared in a movie theater. I mean, your logical brain understands it's a fucking screen, it's a light projected on it, it's actors pretending, and it's ketchup. And yet, you freak out when something happens. Why is that? It's because if the illusion feels real, the experience is real. You're caught up in it. Yes, you get caught up. You lose the sense of, I'm sitting in a movie theater munching on popcorn and there's my spouse here. You get sucked into the story, right? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Make the Spain vision board and everything around it. Set it up anywhere you want. Play some music from Spain or uh, order some Spanish wine once in a while or try a dish or whatever. Support your idea of this is my reality. It just hasn't happened yet. Okay. But there will be no doubt that it will. Now, the road to that will not be like this. It's not going to be a straight line like you're here yeah. and here are your 32 deals. It doesn't work that way. You know what's right. going to happen? You're going to go here and then you're going to get all bummed out because it didn't work. Then you're going to get excited because you got two listings in one week and then this and this and they're going to be these detours and the deal falls apart. Then you get great referral until you reach. Right. But the idea is not to give up when you're here, not no. to get depressed. All you got to do is look at that vision board and remind yourself, ah, that's what I'm working for. Push it right back up. Okay. Breathe, think, live your trip, your future, okay. your dreams. And anything else that doesn't support it gets jettisoned out. Okay. Okay. That well, makes what you know, visualizing never made sense to me before. This helps. Because I, I, I never got visualizing. I just didn't get it. A lot of these things that I recommend, I also looked at like, oh, it's like Sedona. We're going to meditate and go home oh, and some of the money's going to fall from the sky on me. Bullshit. <laughs> Until I visualized and money fell from the sky. <laughs> like, okay, I'm sold. <laughs> I don't question or I don't even understand. And here's the truth. I don't understand a lot of the mechanics of this, but it's like my car. I have a GL450 Mercedes. Something was making a noise not long ago. And my check engine light went on. So as every man who has a big ego, I pop the hood and I'm like, ah, okay. I had no clue what I was looking at. That thing looked like a space machine to me. It's all like this one, you know what I mean? The new engine, yeah. it's like, fuck. I have no idea. Just like my engine, I don't know. But I know one thing, how to get it started and how to get to where I need to be. Yeah. I got that down. I still don't know how the engine gets me there. I just know that it'll get me there. Same thing here. Okay. We could analyze and over, over analyze and think, 
this is how it works and these are the forces at play and whether it's God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. It is not that important. What is important is for you to know, here's how I use it and here's where I'm going. Those are the only two points. So that means if you start visualizing, feeling the experiences, living the experiences, talking about the experiences, enjoying the experiences, you cannot not get there. Because the way you got here was the same process. We already use it. The only difference is now you use it consciously towards something that really matters to you. Okay. That really excites you. That's the difference. So you don't live it by default, you live it by design. That's the difference. Not by default, by somebody else's programming, whether it's television, people around you, social media, your parents, you're taking the wheel. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Any questions? I, I think I got that. I 100% got, I mean, I'm excited now just looking at that and saying, aha, you know, because I've Nurture never allowed myself feeling. to dream. Nurture that feeling of excitement, especially when you're on these lows. And they come. It's just part of, not just real estate, it's part of life. Yeah. It's just that's, you know, you're not fucking anything up if sometimes things go sideways on you. They sometimes right. do. Sure. That's the time to say, okay, I still have something that I'm holding on to. And if you stay with this, I will remind you there'll be a day you're going to mail me a postcard from Spain. Now a bottle of wine. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I take that. And you say... Remember that talk we had? Look at it. Here we are. I am convinced, 100% convinced, you can pull this off. I totally believe that. There is no doubt in my mind. And the only reason you couldn't is if you quit and give up when things look like it's never going to happen. And right. that's going to come. But here's the advantage you have. When it does come, you will go, oh, that's what he was talking about. You will be prepared for it. Not that you expect bullshit or bad things or negative stuff, but I love the Chinese saying that goes, hope for sunshine, prepare for rain. Yes. You will always hope, dream, but you will be prepared. So when something does happen, you know how to recover, you know how to get back because you know one thing, if you just stay with it, if you keep going, if you just focus on what is your number one priority get leads. That's the number one priority. If I do that, there's a direct equation between me being able to get leads and me enjoying the lifestyle. And here's the best part. As you get your tickets, as you're getting ready, as you're getting that new suitcase for the trip, your mind will already start playing for something else. Because there will always be something new and new and exciting and better and, and that's beautiful. Because you will never get it done. There'll never be a point like, I'm done. I don't want anything else. I'm good. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the cool yeah. thing. Yeah? Yeah. Anything else? Um, I know what the problem is. I really don't want to talk about it on here, but um, long story short, I'm a child of abuse. Okay. So that's where a lot of this stems from. So yes. how do you work? I mean, if, if I just constantly do this meditation and visualization, well, I mean, because I've worked on the forgiveness worked on cutting cords, all the stuff, you know, and still yeah. there's something there. You know, I even wrote a book about it, for God's sakes. <laughs> oh, okay, here's what I would suggest. Start gently shifting towards the lifestyle you want. Okay. I was, as you know, not for a long time, but homeless, broke. Mm -hmm. Right. And it was rough. Yep. What I started I I doing is getting a little taste of the lifestyle I wanted. So let me give you an example. There was a beautiful property listed. It was a vacant home in Friendly Hills, California. Gorgeous neighborhood with beautiful views on a clear day. You would see Catalina Island, the ocean. It was lovely. And I would go and just walk through that house. And I was thinking, what would it be like to live like this? Ah. Get a little taste. Because remember what we talked about, your subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between imagined and real. So the feelings I had, the feeling of feeling proud and happy, and I would be like, my parents would see it and they'd be like, damn boy, you did well. You know, my brother would be like, motherfucker, look at that. You know? <laughs> Where's my so room? Wanted, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to experience that. There was a restaurant called Del Rey. Very mm -hmm. fancy, you know, old school restaurant, steakhouse, kind of those dark, 
typical Hyatt places. I couldn't afford a dinner there, but I would go for a drink. I would sit on a bar and order a martini. Okay. Just to get a sense of what it's like to live this kind of life. Okay. I would go to a Mercedes deal. I was always a Mercedes guy. So you guys who drive Lexus and BMW don't give me shit. That's just my choice. I love Mercedes. So I would go to a dealer and I said, you know what? I'm not ready to buy yet, but one day I will. And the guy that I was dealing with was this older dude, super nice, super friendly, super cool. Explain me all kinds of shit about Mercedes and stuff. Do that. Okay. Do that. Get one piece of like, for me, I got a nice pen. I bought one of those nice silver expensive pens. And so when I would sign a contract with a client, I would whoosh, whip it out, you know. And, uh, <laughs> Not you. <laughs> yeah. So these are the kind of things I would do little by little start shifting because what I wanted to reprogram my mind is from the mind, mindset of poor, broke, struggling to wealthy and successful. Okay. And little baby steps that little by little start pushing me towards the lifestyle until it happens. Okay, so it pulls you out. Yes. It actually yeah. pushes you. Yeah. It okay, literally, I, that lifestyle start pulling you. Okay. Where I, and I teach this to my kids, I want to make sure they understand that there is just so much money in this world, that there's so much wealth. There's plenty. There's plenty for everybody. Absolutely. So I teach them and I show them and we do these games. You know, I, I hide money in their room and they just go, oh, I found money. I said, see, money's everywhere. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> and we do these things, you know, I don't want them to look at a price tag of something and say, I can't afford it. Right. I want them to be conditioned early on. You work your ass off. You have to learn. You have to master something. It's not going to happen overnight, but you can have it anywhere you want. You can have the freedom. It's going to take money. Money will buy you happiness. That's yes. another one of those. Money can buy your happiness. Bullshit. <laughs> That's bullshit. Money will buy you plenty of happiness. This yes. trip to Spain, you will be so happy. You'll be ecstatic. You need 26 grand to make it work. You follow me? Money will buy your happiness. Make a lot of money. But here's where people get stuck. Well, I don't know how or I can't. Bullshit. There'll be 5.4 million transactions closed this year in the United States. 5.4 million transactions. There is so much business all around you. And there are people making, making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Why not you? And I tell mm -hmm. you what, it's the programming more than anything. Skills you can develop. Mm -hmm. the techniques and the mechanics you will develop work here and you're doing it, which is fantastic. Okay. The rest is just following the steps, getting better, understanding it's not going to be perfect at first. It's like riding a bike. Remember, you have four tick kids. Remember when they started learning riding a bike? How many scraped knees and elbows? Lots. <laughs> Lots, right? <laughs> and then they figured it out. Yes. Same thing here. This is just a set of skills that this business requires for you to get better at. Okay. Make sense? Absolutely. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Yvonne. Great chatting with you. I really enjoyed this very much. Very different from what we normally talk about on these coaching sessions. So Sorry. <laughs> no, on contrary, I think it was time to address the real issue. Oh, I'm on it. People tell me, just give me that good script. No. No. Like, Dude, it is not about a good script. I can give you plenty of scripts, but if in your nugget, don't believe you got what it takes, you trust yourself. See, one important thing I noticed you said, I can get the job done, and I believe you. Yeah. Now we just need to get that message out so others, your potential clients, believe the same thing. Absolutely. Make yes. sense? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure. And I'm glad you're doing the path with me. Stay with me. We'll get this done. I'll hold you to it. Oh, well, I'll hold you to it. I'm <laughs> expecting my wine now. <laughs> I totally do. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.